Welcome again. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the discretization filter. I hope you know what discretization is. Uh, it's a, a way of transforming real value data into nominal value data. If you want some more explanation on this, then please check out my YouTube channel. I have uh, a few videos on uh, uh, these things. Now, before we do the code, let's go to the documentation and read about the, the discretization filter. It's an unsupervised attribute filter. So we'll go filter to uns, uh, unsupervised attribute. And then we'll go to discretize. Where's the letter D? Discretize, as you can see there. And what, what it says, an instance, I'm sorry, um, an instance filter that discretizes a range of numeric attributes in the data set into nominal attributes. I mean, I don't know why it says um, an instance filter there it's actually said it's an at unsupervised attribute filter because we do one attribute at a time yep the, and it has a few options minus b where we specify the maximum number of bins to divide the numeric attributes uh, into so the default is 10 but maybe we can choose two or three so these are the bins or the intervals to uh, uh, divide the numeric attributes into and then minus m specifies the desired weight of instances if we have weight so see minus b and then we pass the value numerical value minus m value minus f uh, it's minus, fre minus frequency instead of equal with discretization and then we can read about the other options maybe we can invert the matching and we can maybe output binary attributes for discretized, discretized attributes so anyway the filter what it does converts numerical data into um, nominal data using this idea of binning or using the idea of the intervals again you can watch my video on explaining how this actually works now straight to the code i've created a small class called discretize attribute uh we've imp we're, we're, I mean, i've imported the required classes the one that you need to pay attention to is discretize. we load the data set the usual way we'll pass it the full path of the data set and then we set the options and uh, the options, the way we do it, is you, it's usually an array of strings and then we give one element, for example, as the, the first element here, the options of zero, is the filter name and then the next value or the next element of the array needs to be the value. If that element requires a value, then it needs to be the next one. Uh, so, for example, if I say minus V, the minus V does not require a value, so we don't have to specify a, 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 a real value or or something like that in the next element of the array the minus r you use the minus r just to choose the range of attributes so if we go back to documentation which attributes do we actually apply the filter to so minus r and then we can specify a list of columns or we can if we want all of them we can do first to last so the default it says default is first to last so if we don't specify minus r i think it will apply the filter the discretization filter to all the attributes anyway let's experiment and see how it goes this time we'll also try to use the minus v so notice here we use minus b to specify the number of bins let's say maybe we'll do like four bins or something yeah or number of intervals and then minus r to choose which uh, attributes to do that let's uh, get the data set we used in the last video which is qdb1 let's copy the full path from here so we'll use QDB1 to apply discretization to the first attribute because we use index zero. Uh, we'll use four bins or four intervals and then we'll save that to QDB, let's say two. Save and run. It's um, um, complaining because it actually needs a range. So let's say zero to two of the first three attributes, yeah? But why is it complaining? Let's just do maybe first to last and see how it goes. Yeah, so this must have worked and we've used it, we've saved it to QDB, uh, QDB2.rf, so QDB2. As you can see now, it has actually converted it into 
uh, nominal data. See, these are, these are the ranges now because we used four bins. So that's the first one, second one, third one, fourth one for the first attribute, likewise for the second, third, fourth, and fifth. This is our class, so it's also it has also been converted into a normal attribute. Yep, I hope that makes sense. Let's find out why uh, it doesn't actually take the real value. So minus R, column one, column two, specify the list of discrete size, first and last are valid indices. Um, I honestly don't know why, but what we can do maybe um, is if we say first only, for example, first, I'm sorry, I'll run again. So it runs nicely, and then if we display it again and do that only for the first attribute into four bins, let's do the third one. Yeah, it's working now. I don't know why it didn't work before. So it's done. I'm sorry, the second one. Oh, the index actually starts at 1. So we we'll maybe we'll do 2 and 3. Or maybe 1 to 3, the first three ones. It's working nicely. So we've done first, second, and third. Uh, okay. Th what that means is one thing we need to pay attention to which is the start index for the attributes. This time here, it, this, the first index starts at 1 rather than 0. Now we can actually use the minus V option. So we can say the fourth, the fifth option now, we just may say minus V to invert. And what that, it'll, it'll keep these and apply it to the other ones. we keep these columns of these attributes. Yeah, because we created the uh, array to have only four elements rather than five. So if I display now, as you can see, it inverted the selection. So it only applied it to the, it only kept the first three, one, two, three, and then applied it to the remaining ones. I hope that makes sense. I know it's quite easy to use. So that's how we use uh, discretization. That's how we set up the options as an array of strings and that's how we apply a filter and then save the resulting data set. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.